Welcome back once again. You're still tuned to the Saudi Morning Show. And as we're progressing in today's edition of the program, our next stop is going to be with our expert, where again, we are going to be moving on with our discussion about in vitro fertilization. Now, I know that many of you uh, who have been constantly tuned into the Saudi Morning Show would be thinking as to we have been talking a lot about in vitro fertilization of late. But uh, from all our viewers, the, uh, the viewers who we have received a lot of the emails from many of them have had so many queries about in vitro fertilization and they continue to ask us that they need to see more experts in terms of uh, in vitro fertilization and uh, the possibilities and the chances for them to be having uh, really a stronger meaning to their life with the child so well with this we're going to be progressing in our discussion with Dr. Hamad al Sufyan, who is a consultant gynecologist and an expert uh, with uh, in vitro fertilization assalamu alaikum and good morning. How are you doing? Alaikum salam. Uh, Dr. Hamad, thank you so much for joining us in today's program. Especially as we talk about infertility treatments, we understand that this is a big concern for many of our viewers, especially a lot of the females have written to us about it. Tell us a little bit about in vitro fertilization. What is new with IVF especially? Yeah. In vitro fertilization, as it, the word says, it's a fertilization of the egg and the sperm instead of the into the fallopian tube or the uterine tube is in the lab tube they used to call it in, uh, in the west as test tube babies and that's the confusion people thought you will give them a tube with a baby in it and to take it home <laughs> it's just the first three five days where fertilization between an egg and a sperm instead of happening for the first three to five days inside the fallopian tube or the uterine tube it happens in the lab then you replace it in the womb or the uterus like where it comes from the uterine tube naturally into the uterus so it's only the first three or five days where fertilization happens instead of the inside the body it happens inside the lab Mm -hmm. This is the same thought that I um, you had. <laughs> I first imagined once. Once you hear it in Arabic, yeah, even true. you would imagine yeah. this thing, but it's uh, way different. Mm -hmm. And doctor, uh, 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 since you mentioned it, sta uh, it started uh, many years ago. True. And it's continuing to develop. About Thirty-three years ago. Thirty-three years ago. Thirty-three years ago, and uh, it's continuing to develop uh, yeah. with the new technology. Let me ask you about um, the development and the success rate. Mm -hmm. Uh, success rate started between 10 and 15 percent to reach now more than 50 percent in most of the qualified and uh, recognized centers. Mm -hmm. It reaches around 60 percent in mm -hmm. some centers uh, when it is really, uh, you know, the quality management of the lab especially is mm -hmm. good. So it reaches almost four times when it is started. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, to have a successful IVF, uh, we need uh, good uh, uh, doctors and also uh, latest technology. Great. Are we always up to date in this field? Uh, we are up to date, especially in the kingdom, because we have a limited number of centers, but they are developing and up to date with the technology. We mm -hmm. started with normal microscopes, usual ultrasound. Now the technology is 3D, 4D the electronic microscopy enhanced now we can do instead of just IVF what they call ICSI intrasperm injection of the sperm into the cytoplasm of the egg uh, the IVF is merely you put an egg with a sperm and they fertilize each other mm -hmm. now with the new technology you can really insert one sperm where you select the best in one egg per egg and this increased really dramatically uh, the uh, success now there is something they call assisted hatching before we just replace an embryo into the uterus for it to be uh, adhere or uh, attach now you can do hatching into the zona which is the cover of the egg this hatching increased the adherence or attachment of the embryo into the uterus the latest technology now is the embryoscope before we used to traditionally take the eggs and the sperm and read this embryo, how, what stage, and change the fluids around it. Now you don't need to do it. You can observe it with a camera every hour or two hours, whenever you want. 
without taking the embryos out so it is within a normal environment almost and observe it without taking it into uh, the outside environment and you can change the fluids and the nutrients around it without taking it every time out so it's from the ovary inject it uh, and put it back into the uterus so for three four day, five days it does not leave the incubator so it's almost similar to what is natural indeed but uh, let me ask you here dr hamad so especially as you mentioned about xe to simplify it for our viewers because you know we want them to understand what are the different uh, mm -hmm. ways of conception now when we talk about xe is it the same procedure which was happening in the test tube but this time it happens inside the human body uh, no, the human body is IUI, what they call intrauterine insemination okay. of husband semen into the uterus. Oh, okay. Uh, people who are, they don't need IVF really or ICSI. Uh, they have low number of uh, sperms, but not very low. Uh, slow motility, they reach, but they reach too late. So all you do is concentrate the good sperms or semen and re uh, inject it into the uterus so you cut instead of traveling 40 centimeters up to the egg they travel only 10 centimeters in a shorter time so this is what they call intrauterine insemination or shortly IUI uh, the other one is the IVF that was old is when the egg and the sperm they cannot meet to meet for one reason or the other either the tubes are blocked or the sperm cannot reach, okay, or unexplained. So you take one egg and you put 100,000 sperm or more around it and wait for the next day, praying and hoping it fertilize or not. Now you don't need to hope or to wait. Mm -hmm. You just take one egg, one sperm, and with the electronic microscopy, with microscopic uh, maneuver, you can insert one sperm per egg and you see them dividing. So it's really advanced. Wow. Uh, in the past, we used to take the sperm, uh, the embryo, which is the fertilized egg, and check it every day. Now we don't need to. You can observe it with the camera without taking them into a different environment, which decreases the quality of the embryos. And before you replace them, you can put hatching or just what they call it, embryo glow. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in a literal way and put it back these methods really increase the uh, success up to 60 percent and hopefully it will reach more than 70 with uh, more you know technology would, and uh, with, with those details uh, it would even shift up for more exactly and the new technology is changing yeah uh, and now they can even not just f do it for uh, fertility or infertility they do it for uh, hereditary diseases People who have cystic fibrosis, Down syndrome, women wants to conceive after the age of 40, they are afraid of abnormality. You can take one cell from the embryo. Embryo is about 10, 12 cells. If you take one, it will be replaced immediately. You can genetically study it. Is it normal? Is it abnormal? Like if it is trisomy, 47 chromosomes or 45 instead of 46, you do not replace it. So you replace only good embryos. People who have gender problem, like they have too many boys, they want a girl, or too many girls want a boy, you can also do gender selection, okay, with great success. Nothing 100%, but a great success. No shifted IVF, not just merely for infertility, it is also for gender selection, it is for genetic study. A lot of hereditary diseases, especially here, with, uh, you know, first cousin, second cousin marriages, some diseases like thalassemia can be pre prevented, not treated. You can prevent it. Mm. Uh, most women before, you know, when they want to conceive at late age, it's better to be sure, okay, that, that this is a good embryo. It is not affected like by Downs or carrying certain diseases. Right. So here, Dr. Hamad, uh, let's talk a little more about this because I'm sure that this would really interest a lot of our viewers. Now, be it people who have had 
four kids before and are having the fifth one and wanted to be a girl or a boy do some of the people who are having their firstborns and they prefer to have like you know maybe a girl she likes to create ponytails and dresses or <laughs> maybe you know they want to have a boy for any reason that is so could they actually go for gender selection and does it give you like 100% of the results yeah it gives you a good result I mean pregnancy rate naturally is 25 with IVF, ICSI is 50%. It is doubled. The gender selection is 99% correct, but we don't use it for, you know, just going to supermarket, I want this time a girl or boy, no. We call it family balancing. For example, a lady who had uh, four boys, okay, and all of them cesarean section, and they told her, next time is your last oh. pregnancy because it is too risky. She has the right, and we can provide the technology to provide her with the couple or the family what they want. But um, I don't want, you know, to make the idea that you before uh, it's not replacing natural. You know, just married six months back, they want to start with a boy, then a girl, then a... Uh, th this is not the idea. I mean, yeah. uh, you go natural, but I call it family balance rather than gender selection might be a better yeah. word. Indeed, it is. And sometimes we get to see, because of such a high rate of interrelated marriages in exactly. Saudi Arabia, we hear of people, you know, having some severe, severe problems as well. Sometimes anemia to... Uh, thalassemia to many of those things could they be prevented as well like sure. sickle cell anemia especially as we understand it's so difficult to deal with yeah. could that be prevented with IVF? Yeah. I remember two uh, drastic uh, stories I have uh, a couple who have uh, three children all of them is blind because of certain gene they are 50 50 because she is carrier and he is carrier so there is a 50 percent chance the baby will be affected and three blind children is too much for the family of course so we did IVF exe with selection of the normal unaffected or carrier baby and we replace them now they have two normal children uh, so this is really more than just fertility she conceives naturally the other one they have motor dysfunction the baby is normal until the age of three four then they can't walk there is a muscle dystrophy or muscle yeah because of certain very rare disease it took us one year to know where is the location of that abnormality working with other research center when we knew the address from genetic point of view and dna we diagnosed it we replaced the two good embryos she had two normal twins babies a boy and a girl after they had about i think two or three i'm not sure affected babies so now it prevent diseases which is uncurable uh, that's just drastic i mean other than like uh, women at above the age of 40 they have the chance of at least one percent to two percent having a downs syndrome baby we love downs but i mean if you can avoid it it's better mm -hmm. Yeah, and doctor, um, uh, it's good to hear uh, such a story of how technology and IVF is helping people now. You are being so selective to choose the best uh, qualities and then help people uh, with uh, such a thing. But let me ask you, um, before we conclude, what is the percentage of the uh, couples who are using IVF method nowadays in our society? It is increasing because of many reasons. Infertility is one. Infertility can be a primary where you have no children or secondary where you have children but you want more. No. The th second issue is recurrent abortion. Women can conceive but they abort in the first trimester because of chromosomal abnormalities. So IVF can be solution for some of them. Hereditary diseases, consanguity where they enter marriages, uh, age, women now or uh, plan a little bit late so it's better to be in the safe side than sorry and having you know abnormal babies uh, the family balancing I wouldn't call it gender selection so it become a little bit wider uh, place rather than just people who cannot conceive uh, many treatments like male treatment for infertility is not really rewarding opening the tubes which is blocked is not rewarding so IVF and ICSI provided an alternative method it is not 100% success 
but it is higher and it is increasing with improving technology and thanks uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is a leader in this field because they are it is very important to make you know most of families uh, happy with a smile of a child for every family hopefully indeed absolutely and with this uh, dr hamid al sofyan would like to thank you so much for joining us in today's Pleasure. edition of the program and we would definitely like for you to come back and talk to us a little bit more uh, in order to benefit the people who have a age-long tradition of marrying within the family, the complications that could be from that, and how it is that IVF could be a great resort for many of them. A pleasure for me. Thank you. It was a pleasure for us to have you here with us as well. With this, we are going to be embarking on towards our next report. Keep sending us your emails if you have any questions from Dr. Hamid Al-Sufyan. Send those to us as well. Stay tuned.